In this video, I will use an example to illustrate how we can compute a limit when we run into an indeterminate form of type infinity minus infinity. Unfortunately, there is not one single trick that works for all limits of this type. They are all different, and the only strategy is to try to manipulate it algebraically or rewrite it in another form until it looks like a different indeterminate form that we do know how to solve, for example a product or a quotient. Yes, I know this sounds very vague, but I don't have better advice. There isn't a trick that will work for all of them at once. So let's look at one example. I'm going to try to compute this limit, and I'm going to do it in two different ways. As usual, I invite you first to pause the video and try to do the computation yourself, and then come back and continue watching. I want to compute the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x squared minus x, all of that minus x. First, let's look and see what type of indeterminate form we have, if any. I'm going to look at this as the difference of two functions, this function and this function. Inside the square root I have a polynomial, so we know for a polynomial the only thing that matters is the term with the largest exponent. So the limit of this polynomial as x approaches infinity is infinity, because the leading coefficient is positive, and the square root doesn't change that. So the limit of this part is infinity, and the limit of this part is also infinity. So I have infinity minus infinity, and that is an indeterminate form. You may be tempted to think it is zero, but it isn't. Because remember, this doesn't mean we are actually subtracting infinity minus infinity. It just represents a limit. As x approaches infinity, I'm going to be looking at very large numbers. And so what I will have here is a very large number minus a very large number. None of them is infinity. A large number minus a large number, what is that? Well, that could be anything, depending which one is bigger. And that's why this is an indeterminate form. So what can we do? One idea, which is common for limits involving infinity, is to try to factor the biggest possible term and see if that helps. I'm going to do that slowly. Inside the square root, the largest term I can possibly factor is x squared. So let me begin by doing that, and I'm going to rewrite that as the square root of x squared times the square root of 1 minus 1 over x. That's what happens when I factor x squared. And all of this is minus x. And now, the square root of x squared can be simplified. Let's be very careful. In general, the square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. But right here, since I'm taking the limit as x goes to infinity, x will be positive, and therefore that's the same thing as x. So let's simplify it, and once I write this as x, I can take an x common factor. Let's do that. And now let's see what I have here. I have now a product of two functions. This function and this function. Now the limit of x is simply infinity. As for inside the bracket, well, as x goes to infinity, 1 over x goes to 0, so this goes to 1, minus 1 is 0. Look at that, I still have an indeterminate form, 0 times infinity is an indeterminate form, but now it's a product, and I know how to deal with those. I can convert this product into a quotient. Now, hopefully, this is a quotient where I can use L'Hopital. Let's make sure. As x approaches infinity, the limit of the numerator is 0. We already knew that. And the limit of the denominator is 0 as well. Perfect. That's the indeterminate form for a quotient where I can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. And this limit, assuming the second limit exists, is equal to, in the numerator, I will take the derivative of the original numerator. Hmm. So that's a square root, so the derivative is 1 divided by 2 times the square root, and all of that chain rule times the derivative of the argument of the square root. That is minus, and the derivative of 1 over x is 1 over x squared with an extra minus sign. And at the bottom I have the derivative of 1 over x, which is minus 1 over x squared. Well, let's take this and we can simplify a lot. We can cancel some of those terms, so let's see what this leads me to. And there, now I know how to compute this limit, because as x goes to infinity, the square root goes to 1, and the answer is minus 1 over 2. So this limit exists, and is equal to a number, so the use of L'Hopital was legal, the previous limit is also equal to minus 1 over 2, and the original limit is equal to minus 1 over 2. For my second method, I'm going to try to solve this limit without using L'Hopital's rule at all. The reason this limit is complicated is because of this minus sign. And one way to change the signs when it's expressions that involves roots is to multiply and divide by the conjugate. So let's try that. And 
the reason this strategy helps is because now in the top I have the difference times the sum and I know that that will simplify as the difference of squares. So now I can get rid of the square root at the top and I can simplify this x square with this other x square. Okay, and now I have the same expression I had at the very beginning, except that now I have a plus instead of a minus. So I'm going to apply the same idea. I'm going to factor out the biggest term. But when I factor out the biggest term, I won't get into trouble because I have a plus rather than a minus. The two terms with x cancel. And I am left with an expression when I know how to compute the limit. In the numerator I have minus 1, and in the denominator I have 2. So that is it. The final answer is minus 1 half, which is the same thing I obtained through the first method. If you would like to further practice in determinate forms of this type, here are four limits that you can try to compute. But remember that there is not one single thing that will work for all of them. The only idea is, if you run into infinity minus infinity, Try to rewrite it, try to manipulate it algebraically or simplify it until you have it in a different form for which you know what to do.